When it comes to bolt face considerations and dimensions, things can get a little bit confusing. In this video, we're gonna clear all that up. Gavin Gu here from ultimatereloader.com. Recently, I was researching bolt face dimensions and I found it quite problematic to narrow down all of the information that I was looking for. So in this video, I'm gonna break down case rims, bolt faces, relative dimensions, and we're gonna talk about some common center fire rimless bolt face dimensions and what you can expect to look for. Let's start with SAMI. SAMI is the Sporting Arms and Ammunition Manufacturers Institute, and they are responsible for consumer specifications for what you're gonna cut your chamber to and what you're gonna build your ammunition to in terms of specifications, dimensions, and there are certain tolerances that need to be present between the two. The ammunition needs to be smaller than the chamber. The case room needs to be smaller than the bolt face for things to run smoothly and reliably. So if you go to sami.org and you take a look at the charts for different cartridges, you're gonna see two things. You're gonna see on the top, the specifications for the cartridge itself. The overall length, base to datum, case rim diameter, uh, shoulder angle, uh, and so on and so forth. There's quite a few things that are specified so that if you're building reloading dies or if you're building cartridge casings, if you're reloading ammunition, you can use that information as a reference. And then on the bottom part of the diagram are the chamber dimensions. And what's also included, if you look on the left-hand side of that particular diagram, is the breech face diameter. So this is that bolt face diameter that we're gonna talk about in this particular video. If I'm building a rifle, or sometimes if I'm even just loading ammunition, I like to take the corresponding SAMI diagram for the cartridge in question, print it out, and put it with my records. Because inevitably, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna take a look at one of those critical dimensions. If I'm reloading ammunition, it could be the datum line on the shoulder, and what corresponding insert do I need for my headspace comparator tool, and so on and so forth. I wanted to put all of this information in one place, this video and the accompanying article, if you click on that first link in the video description, you'll see all of that. Okay, so about bolt face clearance. Uh, the bolt face does need to be larger in diameter compared to the case rim uh, for which it will accept ammunition with. And that, that is a tolerance. It could squeak by if they're approximately the same size, but you're gonna want a tolerance there. You can actually have a bolt face of larger diameter, quite a bit, than the case rim, except for you need good extraction claw engagement on your case rim. So the bolt face does not contribute to supporting the case. When we think of the chamber walls supporting the case, it's holding back the forces and the pressure exerted by the, by the actual case body on the chamber walls, right? Well, when we get back to the web of the case and the rim of the case, that part of the case is so strong, we don't need to squeeze it in from the circumferential uh, perimeter of that case. It's just not an issue. But what we do need is good engagement between the extraction claw and the case rim so that after pressures are lowered and after that brass contracts just a little bit from peak pressure, it can be withdrawn from the chamber, extracted, and then ejected. So bolt face clearance also affects uh, ejection, the, the cartridge flying out. Now, the position of the ejector pin is gonna be more critical and the extraction claw in terms of the clocking uh, to make sure that the cartridge flies free of the ejection port and that kind of thing. But if you have too tight of clearance and your case room is gonna bind on your bolt face when it tries to fly out, that can definitely be a problem. Okay, so that's kind of what we're looking at when we look at the interface between the case rim and the bolt face and the bolt nose itself. So here's some bolts with different bolt face diameters from the rifles that I had on hand here in the shop. We've got 223 with a 223 cartridge there on its end and on its side for reference. We've got 68 SPC. This happens to be 224 Valkyrie which shares the same bolt face diameter. We've got 762 by 39, which you would also find with 
something like a 65 Grendel or a 6 Arc. Then we move up to 308. This is an actual 308 Winchester cartridge. Magnum bolt face. Uh, so 300 Win Mag or 300 PRC, which I've got here, or even 65 PRC shares this bolt face diameter. The Mighty 338 Lapua, and then all the way up to the Mammoth 50 BMG. So I hope that this is helpful to see all of these bolt faces and all of these cartridges side by side. Okay, so those are the bolt faces that I have in the shop for bolt action rifles. What I wanted to do here was add a couple more data points and talk about the dimensions. This is the chart that I wanted to find on the internet and didn't, so I created it myself. You're welcome. <laughs> so below the 223, we have the 22 Hornet. And what you'll notice for these case, case rim dimensions is Sammy will typically specify a case rim diameter and it will give a tolerance of minus 10 thousandths of an inch. So that's what I've done here across the board. Some of these are specified by CIP. So I took the CIP dimension and I subtracted 10 thou as a min for that. So just know that in, in some of these cases, this is not specified as clearly as what Sammy would specify. 22 Hornet goes from 0 0.340 to 0 0.350. A typical bolt face will be 0.353. And then so on the right we have a column, and I'll walk through this on each one, which is basically whatever the maximum case room diameter is, and to take the bolt face diameter and subtract that from it. In other words, what is the worst case clearance that you would expect to see? And the bolt face diameters here I got from Bat Machine. So, this is the other confusing thing about bolt faces, is that each manufacturer will pick a bolt face diameter that they like. And so, if you're looking for a particular number, uh, you might not find that particular number. You know, the, the 473 that we have here for 308 Winchester corresponds to the maximum case room diameter. And some rifle manufacturers will call that a 473 bolt face, but that wouldn't actually give you any clearance inherently. So for Bat Machine, for instance, we have 480. And in, in some particular instances here, a particular class of bolt face is enlarged slightly to account for an odd cartridge case rim that falls in the same range. So in terms of the bolt faces that you're going to see, you're going to observe a range of different diameters. What you really want to take a look at is this chart look at the case rim max for the cartridge that you're interested in and make sure your bolt face has some tolerance in it. So the bolt face minus rim max is that tolerance and we're seeing numbers from three thousandths up to eighteen thousandths of an inch depending. And in the, in the case of Bat Machine, that eighteen thou clearance for the Magnum bolt face has to do with one of those obscure cartridges that they wanted to accommodate based on customer feedback and as long as we have good extraction engagement on that case rim, totally not a problem. Okay, so the Hornet goes from 340 to 350 thousandths. The bolt face is typically 353. These are all bat machine bolt face diameters, again, giving a worst case clearance of three thousandths of an inch. 223 case rim varies from 368 thousandths to 378 thousandths and bat machine specifies 385 thousandths. This is a bat machine bolt right here. And that gives you seven thousandths clearance. 68 SPC goes from 412 to 422. Bolt face for bat machine is 425, giving three thousandths worst case clearance. 762 by 39 goes from 437 to 447. Bat machine uses 455 for that bolt face. I have an upcoming build for a bolt action 6 arc, which is going to use one of these bat machine front bolt sections for their modular bolt system that uh, actions like the bat TR, their tactical action, uses. So those numbers give you a worst case scenario of eight thousandths of clearance between the bolt face and the case room. 308 Winchester. Now this is a popular one. 463 to 473, bat machine uses 480, giving seven thousandths clearance. Magnum, 522 to 532, 
bat machine uses a 550, giving that maximum number in the group of 18 thousandths clearance. Again, for that corner case oddball cartridge. 338 Lapua, 577 8 to 587 8. This is specified in millimeters, so there's a conversion to inches here, hence the oddball number there. Uh, bat machine uses a bolt face diameter of 0 0.600, giving 12.2 thousandths of an inch. Uh, worst case clearance. Shy tack, which I don't have here. Now I'm going to be getting a bolt for the EX for shy tack because I'm hoping to do a 375 shy tack build. So look for that a little bit later. Shy tack varies from 632 1 to 642 and 1 10th. And bolt face diameter of 650 thousandths of an inch for bat machine, giving 7.9 thousandths of an inch worst case clearance. And then the mighty, the great, the mammoth 50 BMG. This is, this is comical how big this is. <laughs> this is for the EX, the, uh, the 50 BMG that's build that's just about to start here on the channel. Literally, the brake is inbound. I've got the barrel, I've got the action, I've got the accurate rifle systems chassis. This is going to be really, really cool. Look for that shortly. Okay, 50 BMG, 7979 uh, for minimum case rim, 8079 for case rim max, uh, bolt face 810 for this EX, giving uh, 2.1 thousandths of an inch worst case clearance. Now I measured this case rim and for this 50 BMG ammo that I have, which is mil serp, there's more clearance than that. So that's the, the run through of what I've got listed here, plus the 375 shy tack and the 22 Hornet, which I don't yet have here. These are, these are common center fire rimless bolt faces. There are also rimmed cartridges like your 3030, and there are a whole bunch of other obscure cartridges that have different bolt faces that aren't represented here, but this is a pretty good canonical list, if you will, of bolt faces that you're likely to run into, and I wanted to bring you information on this. Okay, so what are the takeaways? Case rims should, but don't always follow Sammy's specs, so always measure what you've got. Note that if your case rims are damaged, from extraction claws or being dented or chewed up or whatever, your case probably won't sit in the bolt face correctly. Cartridges may not feed, they may not extract or eject. It could be all sorts of problems. The case rim is a super important part of the cartridge. Uh, oversized bolt faces are fine to an extent until you get so large that you don't get good extraction claw engagement on that case rim. And Everything has a range and a tolerance across the industry. It's an unfortunate part of dealing with such a large, diverse, and historic ecosystem of firearms components. The firearms, the ammunition, the reloading dies, and they all have a contributing factor to whether or not the ammunition is gonna function properly in your firearm. So, when in doubt, measure, measure again, make sure that everything is going to plan, Look for case rim damage. Make sure that you've got the right bolt face for the ammunition that you're shooting, and you should be good to go. If you're planning a rifle build, if you've got swap swappable bolt heads and you need to get a new bolt head, I hope that the information in this video and the accompanying article is helpful to you. Thank you for watching, and if you have input, if you have a favorite bolt face that is not listed here, drop a comment and we'll start that discussion. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you're interested in becoming a professional gunsmith, 
check out the Sonoran Desert Institute. They've got a degree program, they've got a certificate program, and you can study from home. Learn more at sdi.edu. Thanks again for watching.